just to introduce myself, my name is Catherine. I'm a product manager at Tufin Technologies, and I'm excited to chat with you all today. Um, before we get started, I was hoping to get you get to know you guys a little bit. Uh, first off, bef before today, how many of you had heard of Tufin? Okay, a couple people. And uh, out of you guys, how many people are in a security specific job? Like you work on the security team where you have a security related title. Okay. And what about network operations? Does anybody here sit in the network operations bu bucket or work on network teams? All right, I got one. Uh, and then what about DevOps? Does anybody work on a DevOps team? All right, and last, oh, all right, got one. And then uh, last, does anybody do audit and compliance, like cybersecurity audit and compliance? All right, got a couple. Okay, so, oops. Looks like we're missing a slide. So, uh, well, in today's presentation, we're going to uh, talk about a challenge that involves all four of those teams that I just mentioned. Uh, so when we think about security threats facing an organization, oftentimes the threat is more social and cultural than it is tactical. So phishing is a good example. If your people don't know how to respond to phishing attacks, then your organization is more susceptible. In the same vein, if you have a network team that is siloed from your security team and a DevOps team that's even further siloed, then uh, you're going to be exposing your organization to risk because you're not going to be on the same page about how to implement security best practices. Let's see. Uh, so these are not my slides. I wonder where my slides might be. So we can, uh, oh, tech is on it. Um, so to continue with a, a brief agenda, um, we're gonna be talking about the risks that come with having a very large and complex network. Um, so we're gonna talk about how a lack of coordination between those teams can exacerbate the risks that you face as an organization. And we're gonna talk about how Tufin offers a potential solution to that. And we'll talk about some stories along the way that uh, will hopefully uh, paint some color and uh, put some color on what those risks look like. Um, what do you think? Okay, all right, team's working on it. Um, so to give you a quick introduction to what Tufin is as, as a technology, uh, Tufin is a security policy automation platform. And in layman's terms, that means that we accommodate and standardize security controls across your network. So that's all of your different firewall devices in your network. That's uh, your entire cloud infrastructure. If you have multi-cloud, it's, it's all of your clouds. Tufin provides you a single pane of glass to look at all of the security controls across your infrastructure stack and gives you some tools that would help you control access flows uh, and manage permissions and ideally protect your assets more effectively than if you didn't have that visibility. And so uh, just uh, to give you some context on Tufin as a company, Tufin's market is in the global 2000. Uh, we're known for our scalability and automation, and we do very well with massive, complex, hybrid, and multi-cloud networks. So we're typically working with organizations that are very large. Yes, ma'am? Yes. Uh, so I would say most of our customers are using Tufin for on-premise infrastructure, and then uh, you could also use it, use it for both. Exactly. All right. So uh, let me get the status on those slides. No worries, no worries. Well, I think we can try to get started a little bit here with the problem. So uh, the, root, the root problem that Tufin solves and the, the main reason why you buy Tufin is that uh, there are malicious actors out there who are trying to infiltrate your network. And they're trying to steal your data and, uh, and potentially impact your operations. And so there are two variables that make it particularly challenging to manage the risk and protect your network when it's very large and complex. And that is uh, just the sheer scale of the network that you're working with. You can't sit there and evaluate things by hand. And then the fact that there are, you have a, an increasing development of silos between your security team and network team. All right, it looks like we might be. Yes, all right. Okay, oh, here's a nice overview of uh, 
Toothin and the different sectors that we have customers in. All right, so we can get started. Okay, so the first problem is that, or the first dimension of the problem that Toothin's solving is that uh, enterprise networks are increasingly becoming larger and complex. And that's for many reasons. For these large organizations, you're oftentimes acquiring other companies and bringing in their infrastructure. Uh, sometimes you have regional management of networks that tends to happen with energy organizations where they have different people managing their network in different parts of the country or maybe different parts of Europe or where they may be. Uh, you have expansion to the cloud, which adds a whole different layer to your infrastructure. And then greater demands for processing power. You have DevOps teams that need to spin up resources at an increasing frequency, and oftentimes that's done without putting as much care as they as they might into uh, fitting that into your infrastructure plan. And so as a result, most organizations have a multi-vendor network and they have a hybrid network, so a mixture of on-premise infrastructure and some in the cloud. And uh, it's not as though these various vendors don't have tools for helping protect uh, your different aspects of infrastructure. The problem is that when you have such a large network, uh, there are inherently blind spots between the different tools that you're using. And the task of maintaining cohesive security standards across that entire infrastructure is an extremely labor-intensive task. So here's an example of one of our customers' networks. It's been anonymized. But as you can see, this is an extremely complex network. You're not going to sit there and evaluate by hand where you might have a vulnerability in your network. And so this makes it difficult to identify risks and pre prevent breaches uh, when you're managing something of such complexity and scale. So a really good example of this is, of course, WannaCry, which, uh, you know, in 2017, it was known for affecting hospitals. Uh, it was uh, essentially ransomware that took advantage of a vulnerability in Windows systems. Um, more specifically, the WannaCry software used the SMB uh, port 445 in order to gain access to an internal network. So this is the same port that your, uh, organizations were using for printers to connect with other devices on the network. And what nobody noticed is that the same port was exposed to the broader internet. And so the malicious actors were able to enter the network from that port and then were able to uh, infect and lock up certain um, assets that the organization had in order to uh, hold them accountable for a ransom note. And so, What's interesting is that, you know, when you look at this and you think, uh, it seems really obvious, like, of course, they shouldn't have their printer exposed to the internet. Now that you pointed it out, we all should have known that in advance. Surely this was some kind of negligence. But the thing is, when you have such a large network, it's very easy to overlook uh, issues like that and, and expose yourself to risk. And so I'd like to point out here that if you had a Tufin policy that was uh, prohibiting any access to the internet, except for the specific ports and protocols that you specified, you would, avoid it, you would have avoided something like this WannaCry attack on your system. All right, the second dimension of this is that your network operations team isn't specifically incentivized to focus on security vulnerabilities. They're focused on day-to-day -day operations. They're trying to make sure things are up and running. They don't have the expertise to watch out for new vulnerabilities that might be uh, coming into their ecosystem. And to make matters worse, we've noticed in most of our customers, the security team is siloed from the network operations team. And even further, the cloud operations team is siloed as well. And so without these three groups of people talking to each other, a lot of information is lost, and that exposes your organization to a lot of risk. And I have three, oh, there we go, fun little visual. I have three main pieces of evidence that this is a problem. The first is anecdotal. So a lot of you raised your hands saying that you work on a security team. Uh, ask yourself, do you know what security policies are currently in place to protect your network? If I were to uh, ask you about whether your network is fully compliant with security standards, could you tell me a firm yes or no answer? And if you didn't know, do you know where you could go look in order to confirm that this is true? And then, as I mentioned, your network team is not focused on security vulnerabilities or making sure that you're compliant. Well, they're compliant with their business requirements, but not necessarily with security requirements. 
And so they're trying to enable users and make sure people have access to the things they need. They're not paying as much attention to uh, making sure that the, the network is most secure. And then conversely, your cloud team, since they're able to spin up VMs at a much faster rate than you can uh, create new machines in your on-premise environment, uh, they tend to operate at a faster pace, they're more aggressive and innovative, and they have even less incentive to sit down and make sure, oh, is everything that I'm creating compliant with our security requirements? So despite these challenges, you as security professionals are still accountable for the security of your system. If there's a data breach or there's some security incident, you're the one who has to account for it and you're the one who has to report on it. And so uh, this is why you need some kind of solution to improve communication with your, your network uh, operations team. And so that is the solution that Tufin provides. So Tufin provides a shared framework and a common language for these three teams to collaborate with each other on network security and compliance. It simplifies the task of translating your security objectives and requirements into actionable uh, rules that they're going to apply to the devices in the network. It also provides you with visibility into how, how compliant and how secure your network is, uh, which should provide you with both peace of mind and should make you look good in front of your boss. Um, Tufin also provides an automated change process that would prevent new vulnerabilities from being introduced to your network after you've established uh, a clean and secure uh, network system. And so how does Tufin accomplish this? There are six main features that I think you as security professionals are probably most interested in. Number one, Tufin is aggregating information about all of your network devices in a single place. So while we talked about how large your network is, you have devices all over the world, all provided by different vendors. In a single pane of glass, you can see what is all of my infrastructure and, and how is it connected to each other. Uh, Tufin has a number of tools to help you identify risks and prioritize the remediation of those risks. In the event of an incident, Tufin is uh, very effective at identifying the blast radius and helping you isolate compromised assets extremely quickly. Uh, Tufin also translates your security guidelines into actionable requirements that your network team can implement without too much effort. And of course, Tufin facilitates automated change management so that you don't have people spread across your organization introducing risks after you've cleaned up your, your network. And then lastly, uh, for those of you that are worried about audit and compliance, Tufin has multiple tools to help with uh, reporting on some of those compliance standards. So number one, we talked, I mentioned that Tufin is integrating with a variety of tools. Uh, this is just a quick overview of all the different kinds of devices that Tufin is integrating with. And I can tell you that a lot of work and sweat and tears went into enabling Tufin to integrate with all of these different tools to provide you with that cohesive picture. Uh, Tufin also provides you with a variety of tools for identifying risk. So as you, now that you can see all of those devices and you have a, a ton of information presented in front of you, how do you process what's going on to understand well, where is their risk in your system? And those tools are also embedded in our change processes, which is sort of what's shown here. Uh, in, with very little uh, setup work, Tupin is able to tell you whether a rule exposes you to external risk or whether it exposes you to internal risk. So if something is not compliant with your internal security policies. Tupin also has something called the vulnerability mitigation application, which is something that should be of particular interest to you guys. So. This application integrates with vulnerability scanners like Rapid7, and then it tells you which of the assets in your network are potentially exposed to this vulnerability. So that would have been a very labor-intensive research task that some poor intern would have been subjected to if you didn't have Tufin to do that uh, bit of work for you. And here's just a quick illustration of the UI. Uh, it's gonna tell you which of these vulnerabilities are most severe, are they affecting some of your most precious assets in case you need to prioritize those efforts. And then it gives you a lot of detail on what's affected and how many vulnerabilities are affecting your infrastructure. The other nice thing about Tufin is that we're always looking out to help you track progress as you clean up your environment and make your network more secure. And so here's an example of how you can track uh, the mitigation of those vulnerabilities over time. So next, uh, understanding the blast radius. So if there was an incident somewhere in your network, uh, what do you, how are you going to respond? What is your SOAR protocol? Uh, what are the steps you're going to take to understand uh, what might have been affected? 
Uh, Tufin has a tool called the topology map, which we'll see a little bit more about in a moment, that helps you connect, conduct this type of analysis to understand if a specific asset was compromised, what are all of the different access, access flows from that asset to other areas in the network. Um, we also have a tool called Rule Viewer that would en enable you to do a deep dive into all of the different assets that may have been affected. And then uh, once you understand what's happened, you can use Secure Change to implement firewall rule changes that would isolate something that was compromised. Um, your security policies are another tool for helping to implement a micro-segmentation strategy. So this is where if there was an incident, you're able to isolate uh, production assets from dev, dev assets and things like that in order to make sure that uh, if there is a breach that the blast radius is limited. So this is a quick screenshot of the topology map. Uh, this isn't specific to identifying the blast radius from a vulnerability, but it shows you how detailed Tufin is able to give you a picture of what the different access flows are within your organization. And this is something that would be very labor intensive to try to put together on your own. Uh, these devices might all be from different vendors. They might be located in totally different areas of your network on different subnets. Uh, but with a quick query on path analysis, you're able to see a full access flow. Another example is, of course, going back to WannaCry. Let's say that you uh, learned about WannaCry just recently and you want to know, okay, how many different assets in my environment are potentially vulnerable to the WannaCry attack? Uh, very quickly, you can search for port 445, uh, which is the one that WannaCry, the original version of WannaCry exploited, and then you can see very quickly all of the different devices that you may need to take a look at to ensure that they're not susceptible to that type of attack. All right, so and now it's story time. So uh, this isn't specific to uh, WannaCry or understanding your blast radius, but it does speak to the power of the type of aggregation that Tufin does. Um, so uh, many, many years ago, uh, we were doing a proof of concept for an energy customer, and they, they didn't tell us this going into the meeting, but they had an application that was supposed to go live on the preceding weekend, and they had, intended to go live on Friday night, but they were unable to because the uh, application was unable to connect to a specific server on the network, and they were unsure why. Uh, they looked at their translation tables, and they didn't see anything specific uh, that would indicate why this application was unable to connect. And they actually had to postpone the go live because uh, they could not figure out where this uh, access was being blocked. And so, by total coincidence, the Tufin team was giving them this proof of concept on Monday morning, and we'd uploaded their data, put it in the topology map, and we were just showing them some queries to give them some examples, and they said, oh, hey, you know, could you just put in this query really quick and, and show us, like, what that path looks like? And sure enough, we showed a Cisco ASA transparent device that was not showing up at the routing tables, uh, but that did show up in topology, and they realized this is it, this is the reason why our application was in a, unable to connect, and Tufin was able to show that in 30 minutes, whereas they had spent all weekend searching through their Cisco documentation, trying to understand what was causing the issue. All right, so the next powerful thing that Tufin can do for you is to help you set up a unified security policy. Uh, this is something that is gonna be pushed across your cloud infrastructure and your on-premise infrastructure. And this is what helps guarantee that no new changes are coming in that would uh, create a vulnerability in your network and it ensures that uh, you have no uh, exposure or vulnerabilities in your existing rule base. So one of the reasons this is so valuable is that uh, if you were to go to your firewall team and you said, hey, you know, I saw this presentation and I learned it's really important that we don't have any unnecessary access to the internet. Uh, I want you to start, uh, I, I wanna have a security policy where we don't allow any unauthorized access to the internet in our network. Uh, the network team is gonna come back to you and they're gonna say, look, like that's way more difficult to implement in reality than you realize because uh, the, the network paths that they are trying to manage are oftentimes crossing multiple different devices. Uh, they've been set up over different periods of time. Maybe it was another manager who set up one part of that pathway and somebody else who did it in another part. And so it would be akin to telling you to drive to the grocery store when each of the different neighborhoods has a different, all the street signs are in different languages and use different protocols. And so the nice thing about Tufin is that when you put in that simple security policy in security terms, 
Tufin is going to translate that into what do you need to do in your firewall system as it exists today. So on the screen is an example of what a unified security policy looks like. It's essentially just a grid that says the items in these different zones are or are not able to connect with items in these other zones. And we provide multiple tools for getting these policies set up out of the box. Uh, if you're concerned with PCI or NIST or ISO compliance, <coughs> excuse me, there are tools for uh, creating your policies based on those frameworks. You could also use your own internal corporate policies, or we have a tool called the Security Policy Builder uh, that would help you get started fairly easily. And so here's an example specifically of a rule that is supporting a PCI requirement in that uh, certain PCI applications are not able to access other parts of the network, and this is where that policy makes that clear. And then Tufin is going to evaluate all of your existing firewall rules to ensure that they're compliant with this requirement. Yes, for that I apologize and I would encourage you to stop by the Tufin booth where we can give you uh, not only a detailed look at this slide but we can give you a demo showing the USP as well if that would be helpful. All right, so once you've created your USP, it perfectly reflects the uh, profound intentions of the security team and you know that uh, that policy is set in stone, it's going to protect your network uh, you've evaluated your existing rule base to make sure that everything is compliant, that there's no rogue access path that's going to let uh, some malicious actor access your printers. Uh, now, moving forward, you want to make sure that your various development teams across the organization are not going to introduce new vulnerabilities. And that's what you build an automated change process to do. Um, here, this is the general workflow, what that looks like, and I apologize for the small text. Again, stop by the booth if you'd like to get a copy of this. Uh, but essentially, users are going to create a secure change ticket. In that ticket, it has details about the access that they would like to enable. Maybe they're standing up a new application or they're deploying a new database. And then the network administrator is going to approve or reject that request. And Tufin is going to give you some insight about the impact of that firewall rule change. So is it going to create a vulnerability? Is it going to conflict with other rules that already exist? Is it compliant with your security policies that you agree to? And it's gonna provide you with a risk assessment overall of what the impact of that change will be, whether it's low or high. And then once all of that analysis is complete and everyone is on board, then Tufin uh, verifies that the change has been made on the device so that you have um, full confirmation that the change has taken place. So here's an example of what that change process looks like from the configuration side. So whoever your chief administrator is, they're going to be configuring all of these details and this is something that they could uh, outsource if they needed to uh, have a business owner make an approval on this, they're able to send that person an email asking them to approve certain changes. Uh, but in general, your secure change workflows are gonna capture all of the details about uh, that specific change and the impact it might have had. And then lastly, I think one of the more exciting aspects of Secure Change is that, uh, you know, previously we mentioned you can integrate your uh, vulnerability scanner like Rapid7. Uh, Secure Change allows you to verify that a proposed rule change is not going to expose you to a vulnerability that your vulnerability scanner identified. And so as part of that change workflow, it's going to check, you know, does this rule touch one of the assets that's exposed? What was the priority of that exposure? And then it's going to give you a recommendation about whether you should or should not proceed. Last but not least, reporting and compliance. So Tufin provides a variety of tools that are going to help you complete these, um, these reports if you're responding to PCI or NIST or NERCSIP. And uh, as you can see here on the, on the right, this is just an overview of how many customers we have that are responding to these different standards. Um, Tufin offers a rule risk assessment report that a lot of customers use for audits. Uh, we have a rule recertification and lifecycle management tool um, that enables you, that allows you to show auditors how rules are being updated and approved. And the nice thing is that you can give your auditors direct access to the Tufin platform with a, spe a special read-only role. And so many customers just hand over this, uh, the credentials for that read-only role and they're able to complete the work themselves. So another story about a uh, 
customer who was using Tukin for reporting compliance. So this was an energy company that has a very, very large network that's spread across multiple regions in the state. And they previously had a team of five people who were responsible for completing all, all of these audit and compliance activities. Uh, over the course of multiple years, they implemented Tufin, built out all of these processes. Now they have a, a pretty much fully automated uh, rule management process, and they've been able to reduce their staff to two people. Three of those people were able to go on and do more exciting things, and uh, their system is more secure, and they have a lot of confidence that they're not vulnerable to a breach. And then lastly, like I said, Tuvin is big on showing you the progression of how your system has progressed from having many risky rules or having a very messy environment toward being a clean, secure, and organized network uh, that you can have confidence in. And this is just an example of the type of dashboard that we provide. All right, so this is not something that we offer today, but this is a feature I wanted to bring up because it's, I think, very helpful to security professionals or uh, DevOps people who might be using Tufin, and that is that uh, Tufin provides a chatbot that you can access via Slack or Teams that's going to answer questions about your network topology. So why is this firewall blocking a connection? What routing is missing on the pathway from A to B? What can talk to an asset? And then even better, you know, I'm thinking about requesting this rule change. What would be the impact of my request? And the chatbot's going to be able to provide you with different levels of answers depending on what your permissions are. Um, Tuvin has designed the chatbot to uh, verify the user's identity before it provides them with any substantive information. Um, all transmissions are encrypted uh, in, at rest and uh, in transmission. And then we have a highly segmented architecture that makes sure that uh, there's no way to infiltrate your Tuvin environment or your network uh, via the chatbot that's living in Slack or Teams. Here's a quick example of what one of those interactions might look like. And the way we see it, this is a way to make the insights that are so powerful and so useful in Tufin accessible to other people in your organization. And so, you know, you guys may not want to learn how to uh, navigate through Tufin and figure out how to use the different tools, but wouldn't it be nice if you had a chatbot that would provide you with these quick and efficient answers to help you get your job done on a daily basis? So in summary, Tuvin helps you deliver applications and make changes to your network quickly, efficiently, and safely. Uh, we help you establish and maintain a least privileged network and implement a zero trust architecture, uh, both of which are going to make, reduce the risk of a breach overall. Uh, we help you segment your network in the worst case scenario that there is some issue in compliance with a SOAR framework or something similar. We help you automate access changes without introducing new risk to your system. And then we have continuous compliance automation to make sure that you can tell your auditors or just tell your boss that your network is definitely secure and you have high confidence in that. In terms of the impact of Tufin, I think this slide is always interesting to show. Um, as you guys know, ransomware attacks and other cyber attacks cost organizations a lot of money. On the previous slide about WannaCry, it showed that banks have paid somewhere around $1.2 billion in ransomware fees over the past couple years. Um, if you were able to avoid those types of incidents, you would definitely save your organization a lot of money, and that's one of the payoffs for investing in your security architecture, or the security of your security architecture. And then before I leave you guys, uh, I do want to let you know if you stop at the Tukin booth, you can enter a chance to win a awesome North Face Tukin backpack, uh, complete with all the bells and whistles, and so I encourage you guys to stop by. And then, I think we're doing pretty good on time, so I'll stop here. Any questions from you guys about the product or anything we discussed today? Hi, yes. Oh. So Tufin is not installed on the device level. It's installed on your cluster. If you have uh, on-premise infrastructure, it's installed uh, there natively with your on-premise devices. And then on the cloud, it's installed uh, just as a, an application on your cluster. So it's, it's integrating with your devices to import information. There must be something, so, sorry, so the integration itself, there must be something from the devices for integration for it to be able to collect or telemetry back to it. So y yes, it's integrating with your device, but uh, I thought your original question was where is Tufin installed? No, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, 
But yes, so you have an integration with each of your devices that's going to keep uh, current information about what the rules are for that device. Okay. So the, the other I didn't see, you got great security audit standards there, but I didn't see any cloud-specific based ones. That's true. Uh, so NIST and FISMA certainly extend out to cloud. PCI has some cloud stipulations, uh, but we don't have a uh, cloud-specific framework that we have been focusing on or that we've heard customers complaining about. Any other questions? So, uh, from what you said, it seems that the policies are the, um, the, the how to say, the kernel uh, of, of this. So, um, if the policies are good, the product is good. If the policies are not the right one, it's not. So, uh, uh, do you have a set of policies that you recommend to the clients, or how, how they, t because to me this is a um, nutshell, how you define the policy. Yes, you're exactly right, and that's why we provide out-of-the-box policies based on the primary security standards that our customers are using. So PCI, DSS, NIST, uh, and some of the other frameworks that were listed there on the slide. And if you swing by the Tuvan booth, we can give you a demo of what the process looks like of building one of those policies out of the box. And after that, the customer can uh, fine-tune some of the things they want? Or the error prone? So, so you, you have the out-of-the-box policy? Correct. So after that, the customer, can they uh, add or uh, fine-tune some of them to say, okay, we need, need something specific, we need to use a specific port for some communication, which is not what everybody used to use or something like that? Yes, yes, it's a great question. So Tufin is the most customizable uh, tool of this kind on the market. And even, even if you start with an out-of-the-box policy, you're able to adapt it to whatever your needs are. Um, our customers go through multiple iterations of their USP. Sometimes they need to change the way that they're written based on the way their IPAM is structured and the way their zones are structured. But you have all, all dimensions of configurability and pretty much nothing is, is impossible uh, using the platform. When do they know they are done, that everything that could <laughs> be controlled by policy is done? So is this a way to know, okay, where you are in this process of uh, yes. fine-tuning? Fine well, the way that I think auditors define a customer as being done with uh, configuring the security of their network is that they have verified that all of their firewall devices and all of the security controls on their network are accounted for and that those have been documented as compliant with their uh, unified security policies. So Tufin is kind of a firewall on top of all the other firewalls? It's a layer of abstraction that takes the context provided by these different firewall devices to provide a cohesive picture of what all of the access flows are in your network, and then it's able to evaluate how compliant are these different devices that use different terminology with your unified security policy. And I will say, if you were trying to do that manually, you would spend a lot of time going through each device. Sure, sure. So yeah. Any, oh, go ahead. Uh, do you have uh, yes, uh, I would say uh, Tufin is uh, very much international. Uh, our main R&D headquarters is in Israel, Tel Aviv. Oh, wow. and, uh, and I'm not sure what percentage of our customers are, are not American, but it's a yeah. substantial percentage. Yes, I think a good example of that is ECB, which is a set of regulations that apply to European banks. Okay. And so we have a lot of tools, especially our rule recertification tools that are specifically designed to help customers facing those uh, compliance requirements. Awesome. But, uh, but yes, and the other thing too is language compatibility. Tufin is available in many different languages and our, our chatbot that's coming out soon is also going to be able to recognize the user's language uh, as soon as they start typing because uh, our users oftentimes speak many different languages. Awesome. <laughs> our headquarters is technically in Boston, but uh, our R&D division is primarily based in Tel Aviv. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Tufin's biggest differentiator is that it's able to handle very, very large networks. So and you're talking about an enterprise organization that has 200,000 firewall rules or that has, uh, you know, maybe they're managing the life cycle on 500,000 recertifications. Uh, Tufin is able to handle that scale and that volume and, and the complexity of a network of that size. Uh, so another uh, variable that maybe didn't come out in the presentation is that you're able to organize your infrastructure by domains. And so many of our customers have domains based on region if they're spread out across Europe or spread across the United States. And then within each domain, they have uh, you know, very uh, deep hierarchies of device information and group information that they uh, are using Tufin to evaluate and manage. Yes, so if, if you're trying to evaluate new proposed access flows uh, in your network, Dufin can automate the process of evaluating the security of that proposed change, getting approval from the required people, and then uh, pushing that change to the person who's gonna implement it on the device, and then verifying that the change took place. And so the advanced users of Tufin have automated most of that work so that it's little, it's zero touch or low touch uh, once it's all built out. Yeah. So SOAR, as so far as I know, is, is a framework for thinking about uh, what your um, security framework should be. So it includes uh, continuous, um, continuous compliance. Uh, it includes having a, a plan in place in case there was a breach. And so many of the features that Tufin offers help you complete your SOAR requirements and build up that framework. Sure. All right. Any other questions? Sure, of course. Uh, not today, but that is something that's in the works and that's uh, that is on the roadmap for this year. All right. Well, I appreciate all of your time and uh, definitely stop at the Tufin booth and enter to win a backpack. <laughs>